Now I'm joined by Pelham Smithers. He's been an investment analyst for 20 years, including stints at Japan Strategist and ING Bearings. In 2009, he co-founded the uh, company Pelham Smithers Associates, a research firm specializing in the Japanese technology and manufacturing industry. So quite an introduction. <laughs> well, <laughs> welcome to the show. So, I mean, my immediate thought, having you know, read through, looking at the, the impact that it's going to have on companies, on electronics goods, this is what Japan is known for, this is going to hit exports, right, at a time when the government really <laughs> needs the revenue from them. Oh, um, it's very bad news for Japan in the short term in terms of uh, production capabilities. Not absolutely disastrous because um, in economic terms, uh, this is not the most economically sensitive part of the economy. It accounts for about 3% of the economy. But ironically, some of the key high-tech industries that you mentioned, some of the areas where Japan is actually gaining strength in the world economy, are, are fact, uh, uh, factories are there. Can you tell me which industries are going to be hardest hit? Uh, we were saying manufacturers, including Sony and Toyota, are closing their plants. From what we know at this point, who, who is going to really suffer? <laughs> I think you've identified uh, two companies which uh, are at the forefront of this, in part because of the just-in-time production systems that these companies operate. If uh, they can't get the materials from one of their factories, it became problems for the assembly and then for the distribution down the line. As you've also mentioned, there are problems on the distribution because of the road network and rail network as well. So all told, it's going to be difficult for the likes of Sony and Toshiba to get product out to the market. How long is it going to be? I mean, this is a this is a tough question. How long is it going to be before operations return to normal? Well, assuming that nothing gets worse on the nuclear side, just assuming that we've had the worst and this is what we're dealing with, it probably will take a, um, a month or two uh, for the problems to be cleared and then, I suppose, a ramp up of over six months, I mm -hmm. guess, before we actually see everything, sorry, say vaguely back to normal. But it's not, there are going to be two phases, I think, um, getting the factories open and then getting them fully running. And that's the thing, to, to get them fully running will also be a problem because I guess you know, they've been trying to calm things down at the nuclear power plants by pumping seawater inside to cool these reactors down. We understand that this will cause damage, so you're going to have you know, several nuclear plants potentially completely written off. Does that mean ongoing power outages, lack of electricity production won't be at the pace it was before? Uh, well, that is obviously the case. Uh, fortunately, Japan does have um, a moderate level of excess capacity for, for, for energy. So, um, Assuming the situation doesn't deteriorate from here, um, they're operating a, a rolling back-out system which they should then be able to move over to full-scale uh, um, e energy access. But you keep saying assuming that things don't get worse. That's a pretty big assumption, isn't it? I mean, well, can I ask you that the worst-case scenario, what if there was, you know, some sort of major radiation leak? <laughs> well, if it was just a, a, a radiation leak, you get a situation whereby um, they try and contain it and uh, we're, we're talking uh, major psychological and industrial and probably agricultural damage uh, plus human life in the, in the short term. If it's more than that, then um, you know, we don't want to be talking about that. According to Goldman Sachs, Toyota's profit may be reduced by $73 million for each day. This is each day that it halts production. This is just one company. I mean, there are, of course, many others. Honda, Nissan, Fujitsu yep. also halting production. What does all this mean for the overall economy? Oh, it's going to take a hit. Uh, I think the best uh, similar analogy is what happened here in the UK when we, we lost a couple of banks. Uh, the government has to come in and, and salvage the situation. Uh, the UK economy took a, what, 10% GDP hit. Wouldn't be surprising. It was something similar to that in Japan. Worse than the recession. Sorry? Worse than, worse than the recession? Well, it's, it's, <laughs> it's already pretty bad. It's already so pretty, pretty bad. bad, yeah. And just very, very briefly, companies that may benefit... Well, um, ironically, you know, people trying to get in touch with each other. I mean, um, the uh, website Alexa.com, which monitors tra web trafficking, has seen a big number of hits for the Twitter uh, Japan website. That's run by a company called Digital Garage. Uh, the other Japan social network sites are probably also doing quite well. I mean, ironically, that's where some of the good news lies, but it's, it's thin. Pelham Smithers, Managing Director, thank you very much indeed for coming in to speak to us.